let's talk about the elephant in the room. The question that we've been seeing a lot of, which is what happened to the Brave Wilderness Channel? There we go. What's going on, Coyote Pack? And welcome back to Base Camp. Welcome us to Base Camp. We have right. been gone for a long time. Right. We're back in the United States after our extensive Australia and New Zealand production. And when you say extensive, Mario, tell the Coyote Pack, how many days have we been out of the United States? It's been 50 days, for sure. Uh, Australia was kind of the, the larger part of the trip. Mm -hmm. We were there for like, I believe, 38 days, uh, right? Yes. Several weeks. Days. Yes. And then over we, a over a month, and then we went down to New Zealand for a, a week or so, mm -hmm. and uh, now we're back. It was the most intense trip we have ever been on with the highest stakes possible, producing for a new series that's going to be on Animal Planet while also balancing YouTube and getting more YouTube content at the same time. So we're gonna talk about a lot of things today, guys. Um, got some great announcements. I know a lot of you have questions. Uh, we've been reading the comments in the comments section. So we're definitely going to address uh, a lot of what's been brought up, but first let's share with everybody how the Australia and New Zealand trip went. Mario, what was your favorite moment from this trip? Man, that is so hard, so difficult to answer because we hit the ground running, right? As soon as we landed in Australia, we're on the Sunshine Coast mm -hmm. and we started to do tide pooling segments, right? Well, wait, before the tide pooling segment though, the first animal we caught, we have these down days, right? So when you oh, fly okay. that far, you have acclimation days. Um, so we're forced to take two or three days to acclimate because you're completely flipped as far yes. as like your time. You're awake when you're supposed to be sleeping. You're sleeping when you're supposed to be awake. You don't eat right. Your bathroom schedule is all over the place. But the first animal that we caught was actually the water dragon by the swimming pool of the hotel. That's right, at. yeah, I remember that. And we caught six water dragons in three days, I think? Right. And then what was funny is we needed to catch one later on. Yeah, and we thought they were gonna be really common in other areas. <laughs> they were not. When, you, when you're staying in a hotel and you're like, oh my gosh, there are water dragons all around the swimming pool. That's when we started conceptualizing this episode called Urban Dragons for Animal Planet. And I yeah. don't wanna give away too much. It ended up working out in the long run, but finding a water dragon after the point where we were at that first hotel was a lot more difficult than we thought. Yeah, right. So as I said, you know, we, we hit the ground running and mm -hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah, the urban wildlife. But then we started to produce segments yeah. and uh, the first task was tide pools because we were right on the coast. Mm -hmm. So when you ask me, you know, what's my favorite moment? It's, it's so difficult. I could have a favorite moment from each location potentially. And so, okay, that's, yeah. that's a good thing to note. The locations we went through, uh, we were on the Sunshine Coast, we were in Mullaney, we were in Darwin, Catherine, Barclay, Alice Springs, yep. Sydney area, just outside of Sydney. What am I missing? New Zealand. And New Zealand. Right? Yeah. It was, yeah. A, it was a lot. We hopped from spot to spot to spot, spending on average between five days and a week in each spot. Airplanes from place to place, we drove all throughout the outback. Yeah. And that's what? thousands of kilometers. Thousands of kilometers right into the heart of Parenti territory. Now, I believe yeah. the last time that you and I did a base camp together, we talked about the Australia trip and the big species that we wanted to go after, which was Australia's largest monitor, the Parenti. That's right, yeah. I, I kind of actually remember that base camp as if it was the other day. Yeah, we had the rubber lizard and we're like, <laughs> yeah. well, they can be this big, they get bigger than this. How crazy would it be to catch that species when we've worked with the sand monitor, the lace monitor, and the, the Nile monitor, right. but the Parenti was the dream. So for those of you that don't follow us on Instagram, do you want to let them know if you were successful or not? We did finally manage to catch a Parenti and it was the most difficult, most arduous search and, and challenge we have ever undertaken to right. find, catch, and successfully present a lizard, or an animal for that matter. That's right, I would say in my career as a wildlife biologist, even before working with you guys, I don't think I've ever put so much effort into mm -hmm. searching for a species, and it came down to the last day. It did, right? the last day. We had seven days to find this animal. We got it on the last day, um, and I can personally not wait to start writing the script, the voiceover script for the episode for Animal Planet. Yeah. We've seen the footage. It's 
it's incredible. We cannot wait for you guys to see it. Um, and long story short, without giving away too much, is we put in so much incredible effort on this trip. Longest trip we've ever done. I can't tell you guys exactly how many episodes we got, but it was a lot between Animal Planet and YouTube. Right. We've never produced that much content in that amount of time. And then of course, the level of pressure on top of all of it to produce a higher caliber of content and the new cameras we were working with, new locations, new challenges. It was right. all encompassing. Right, and you know, all those aspects what that means is time, mm -hmm. right? It takes time to get to the other side of the world, mm -hmm. right? It takes time to acclimate. It takes time to get used to the new gear that we have. Um, and and all that kind of gives us a little bit of, of, or at least we feel a little bit of pressure, right? Because right. we want to give you guys the best content possible. And um, the rewards is, is us being here right now. Mm -hmm. The reward is the species list yes. that I have there of what we found and what we filmed. You and I specifically, and Mark included, we did not take a single break in the entire course of the trip. Like, so right. our break days, scheduled in break days, we would end up then going out to search for more animals to get YouTube content or to film B-roll. And we got right. some pretty cool YouTube content on this trip. We did. Can we give anything away? Uh, okay, how about we talk about this because I don't know if you guys follow us on social media. If you follow us on at Brave Wilderness or at Coyote Peterson, at The Real Mark Vins or at Mario Aldecoa on Instagram and Facebook, I'm sure a lot of people saw pictures of me having transformed into Smeagol <laughs> and Gollum. Well, we shot an episode in New Zealand. We produced an awesome project for the How to Train Your Dragon film franchise about glowworms. That comes out in just a couple weeks. But we also had well, the opportunity- I gotta say it. How to Train Your Dragon? Yeah, How to Train Your Dragon. You know, dragons, yeah. pick up, So we're Astrid, allowed to, we're allowed to tell them that. Yeah, of course. The episode comes out in like two weeks. Okay, did you guys hear that? This is gonna be an awesome segment and you guys want new content. Well, this is probably like the ultimate. That's what- Oh, it's amazing. So yeah, sorry to interrupt, but no. I felt like that's a- some well, big news. You know, How to Train Your Dragon yeah. is a huge thing for us. I mean, we're sort of the digital spokespeople now for the How to Train Your Dragon film franchise, yeah. which has been one of my all-time favorites. I mean, so now we get to do work with Jurassic yep. and with dragons. Well, it's the best of both worlds, right? Awesome. So anyways, <laughs> back to Lord of the Rings, which is another one of my favorite film franchises. Yeah. We had the opportunity to visit Hobbiton. Hobbiton is the Shire set that was used in both the Lord of the Rings and right. the Hobbit trilogies. They shut down the location for us for four hours and we got to go out and make sort of like a fun video. Obviously, uh, if you're visiting a location, it's like, well, we can take this really seriously or we can make it fun and comedic in our own sort of fictitious world, right? Yeah, well, I think Mark and I took it in a fun manner, but you went the next level, man. You, you went, you went kind of weird. Well, what a lot of people probably don't realize <laughs> is that I love Smeagol and I you love do. Gollum. That split personality between Smeagol and Gollum and whenever in your life are you gonna have the opportunity to play both of those roles? That's and right. behind the scenes, we collectively said, okay, you're really good at the voice. And you guys are probably saying, well, you're good at the voice. How good at the voice? We're all precious. We're pretty good at the voice. But you'll have to just wait and see until we actually release the video. So I'm pretty good at doing Smeagol. You and we are. said, maybe we should transform you between being Coyote Peterson into Smeagol and into Gollum. Right. I made the full transformation, shaved my body, and painted myself gray to yeah. become this character. You, you did, and it was fantastic. Yeah. You, you did a great job. He's kind of like a method actor. It was method acting Because at here's the thing that was just getting creepy and weird is as soon as we got to New Zealand, he started getting into character. We went to dinner and he started talking like him and you know, he started doing all these weird things. And um, I mean, you did a great job, but yeah. we'll let the audience determine. Yeah, because it's not just like, Oh, he's Coyote, and then he's Smeagol, and then he's Gollum. Yeah. There is there is a pretty cool storyline that it, that it follows, and some pretty magical things that happened when we visited Hobbiton. It did. It, it was pretty pretty amazing. I mean, I will say the the one thing I remember the most is uh, you you bit me. Hey, you tried to take my precious. So yeah, I'm not gonna give it away, but but you did. You bit me. Don't touch my ring, son. Don't touch <laughs> my ring. Anyways. An amazing episode that's coming out that we had right. so much fun making about Lord of the Rings and Hobbiton, so stay tuned for that one. Um, but let's use that to transition into the topic of new content. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the elephant in the room. The question that we've been seeing a lot of, which is what happened 
to the Brave Wilderness channel. Right. Let's just address it, because we do read the comments, guys, and we know, trust me, we know that you know that we know that we've been uploading a lot of legacy content. Yeah. Why are we releasing old episodes? Ultimately, it takes time to make great content, mm -hmm. right? We have been uploading content on the Brave Wilderness channel now for almost five straight wow. years. At least two, if not three times a week. And I'm not saying that as an excuse that we're getting tired. We certainly are not. We are producing more content now than we ever have before. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it takes time. So when we spend 50 days in Australia producing content, part of it's Animal Planet, part of it's YouTube, but you guys gotta remember, in all fairness, we do need downtime. So we took right. a couple months off around the holidays. Um, and it is gonna take us some time to rebuild up the repertoire of content. When it came to Legacy Series, what we said to ourselves internally was, well, we've got thousands of new subscribers, new members of the Coyote Pack coming to the channel every single day. And when you've got over 500 videos, a lot of these new people haven't seen the old ones. Right. They're episodes that we're incredibly proud of. They were right. hard to produce. They were amazing catches. You and Mark got incredible shots. We want to keep sharing them. And for the people that haven't seen those episodes, why not put them back up? Right, that, that's a really good point. Some of these legacy series are, are episodes that we were so proud of. Releasing them again means there's a new take on it, new excitement. I mean, even for, from my standpoint, seeing the footage and seeing that storyline gets me excited and motivated to right. continue making more content. Right. And it's certainly fair for you guys to be frustrated with seeing episodes that you've seen before. Um, the way that I look at it is I love all the episodes. Like my life is about making this content to share with you guys. So for the new people that have joined the channel, it's the first time for them. For the rest of you, you know, together, let's celebrate what these animal situations are, what these encounters are, what these right. episodes are. Um, but I guess in the end, we looked at it as, well, we could release nothing and just have the channel sort of be stagnant or put up old stuff. And honestly, right. guys, internally at Wilderness Productions, we voted let's revisit some of this old content because we would rather you guys have something than nothing right. as we're producing the new episodes. Yeah, that's a great point. And another point you touched upon is we are as busy as we have ever been. So there's a contrast between seeing the comments of like, what happened to the Brave Wilderness channel? Like, you guys aren't creating new stuff. And it's like, actually, we're creating so much more stuff right now than we have ever done, uh, you know, in, in our career, so. Yeah, but in all fairness, I am just like the Coyote Pack. Like, <laughs> I want those episodes now. I can't yeah. tell you guys how bad I want these episodes to get through post-production, but you have to keep in mind, that process oh. takes time, too. I was about to say. You know, post is a yep. lot. So, especially for me as, as, as a host and a producer, I'm also writing those stories. So, I'm balancing Animal Planet and YouTube at the same time. You're pre-producing the next locations. Just because we spent 50 days in Australia doesn't mean that we don't have a lot of work left to do still for Animal Planet and YouTube this year. I mean, right. it's only the first quarter of the year, so there's good stuff coming. Let's talk about that. Let's talk yes. about what's being produced for YouTube this coming spring, because spring is here, and you guys know that when the warmth shows up, the dragons show up. That's right. Uh, probably, I remember actually on the plane, Back to the States, you were so excited because it's your favorite time of year, snapping turtle season, yes. right? Snapping turtle season is here. Yeah. We've already started producing. We've got we three episodes in the can so far. Like we literally got off the airplane and two days later we're out yes. in the swamps catching our first snapping turtle. Here's the, the dedication of Coyote Peterson and the team. It, it's we have jet lag, right? If you don't know what jet lag is, it's basically once you travel to a destination and the time differences and so on, it kind of messes with your body and you feel exhausted. Yeah, you're like even, a zombie. Yeah, even though it might be like 2 p.m. during the day. So we're completely jet lagged, but Katie's like, we have to go out. I have a feeling that turtles are gonna be moving. It's sunny out, <laughs> it's spring. The turtles are definitely moving. So yeah. we've been battling between rain, cold, sun, and warmth. Yeah. And, you know, in just a matter of about a week and a half, we've gotten three pieces of content in the can already. That's right. We're hunting for turtles, guys. We're trying to still find that world record snapping turtle. So Dragon Tales is hot and underway. Yep. Um, a number of new breaking trail episodes that we're producing. I actually put a teaser on Instagram yesterday about ticks. Uh -oh. It is tick season. And I know everybody's like, oh, Coyote's done with bites and stings. I mean, yeah, but there's still some other ones that we want to do that are not like crazy bites, but we yeah. still want to educate you guys about this stuff. So we're going to do an Eaten Alive by Ticks episode. Yeah, I mean, that's more like a science experiment. Exactly. Right? 
Well, you're gonna get ticks, right? You know, and the, the, just for clarification, no, I'm not going to be bitten by a deer tick. A lot of people were asking that, and that's how you can get Lyme disease. Yep. I am going to attempt to be bitten by a uh, a dog, a dog, an American dog tick, also known as the wood tick, um, to show you guys how to properly remove right. a tick if it gets on you or your dog. So. That's an episode that's in the works. I'm sure everybody's running the comment section right now. They're like, oh my gosh, Coyote's gonna get eaten alive by ticks? <laughs> well, yeah, for science. Um, but we've got a, a number of other things in the works. You've got a new series that you're developing. Yeah, uh, you know, that series is, is in the works. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I love reptiles. I love photography. So likely it's gonna be a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. So anyways, right now I've got a permit that we sent in and hopefully you'll get a, a timber rattlesnake segment soon. That'd be pretty sweet. I know yeah. Mark has three Blue Wilderness trips planned already, as mm -hmm. in pre-production has started on those. So bottom line is guys, there is a ton of new content coming. We're gonna yep. have some big announcements very soon about the Animal Planet series, the official title and the official release date within the next right. I would say probably month we'll be able to reveal that. Um, but stay tuned to the YouTube channel, guys. Stick with us, new content is coming. Did you mention Beyond Dinosaurs? No, and I also didn't mention Jurassic World Jurassic Explorers World Season Explorers. 2. There is so much. <laughs> Let me just... My new book is coming out, my new Brave Adventures book. Of course, the new Brave Wilderness Adventure Kit also just launched. This is the second edition, Reptiles and Amphibians. So when we say that we've yeah. got a lot of stuff going on, we are super busy. <laughs> It's an understatement, but guys, honestly, thank you from the bottom of, of our hearts for sticking with us. We right. know that you guys are hungry for new content. We're making it, it's going to be here soon, so thank you for being such loyal members of the Coyote Pack, and we are constantly reading the comments, we are constantly listening, and trust me, we are doing everything we can to bring you guys animals and adventure. Yeah, you guys continue to motivate us and inspire us to do what we're doing. And that's what pushes us through a 50 day long production. And that's what pushes us to get back and to continue and get more footage and more segments for you guys. So thank you for that motivation and inspiration. We could not do it without the Coyote Pack. And speaking of timing, 15 minutes from now, we have a call time as we are about to film another episode of Dragon Tales today. I gotta change out these clothes, get into my swamp clothes, and with any luck, maybe today we'll find that world record turtle. What do you think? I like turtles. I think he's ready. I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Ariel Dakoa. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next Base Camp Adventure. All right, it is turtle time. Dragon season is just around the corner. And if you are excited for more snapping turtle encounters, make sure to go back and watch this episode from our turtle adventures last year. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next wild adventure.